are your rights liberty that's what rights are they're liberty are they exercising love is your Christian walk is everything about your Christian walk exhibiting love even to the ones you don't get along with even to family do you live a life in love how's your attitude toward others what is your attitude toward I can't ever say it right Antifa Antifa what's your attitude toward Black Lives Matter yeah I get aggravated but I still love them they still need Jesus what about Muslims what about all these other groups you know Muslims the Muslim group is one of the fastest growing Christian groups now there's what I'm saying the Muslims being converted to Christianity Muslims being converted to Christianity is one of the largest ones right here you, you wouldn't know it but it's happening everything we do everything every way we act and everything we say should be about love do you love others do you love God and what's the first com greatest commandment love God with all your heart soul and mind and love thy neighbor as yourself do we do it are you real are you willing next slide <clears throat> and I'm not going to read the next 1 through 12 verses. Are you willing to give up your rights? Verses 9 through 12. They deal with pastoral support of the church. Our church has done well in this area. Thank you. Y'all, I've never had anything, a need or anything that wasn't met. Our needs have always been met, and there is an understanding that for that need arises, God will meet the need. God always meets my needs. He's never failed. When I was off work for a year and a half, I didn't miss a bill. Don't know how, except for God. That's the only way God took care of it, was we paid our house notes, we paid our grocery bills, we paid our electric bills, Everything was taken care of. God took care of it. That was before I became a pastor. So God will meet your needs if you put all your faith and trust in Him. Not all pastors have been blessed the way I have here. I'm just telling you, I am thankful for our church. I'm thankful for the love in this church. I'm thankful for everybody that reaches out. I'm thankful for Ron that I can always bounce things off of him. I love you. That's probably the best way to put it. Thank you for your love, your prayers, your spiritual and moral support. This pastor and wife loves you and appreciates each of you. Bobby and Debbie. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8, 15, it is written, He who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little had no lack. God meets the needs of his children. You don't have to have a million dollars in the bank. You don't have to have a million dollars put back for retirement. If you trust God 100%, God will meet your needs. He'll meet them through his own blessings or the blessings of others. And God does it over and over and over. So quit worrying about what you're going to eat, where you're going to lay your head down, what you're going to do with all this garbage that's going on. If they burn my house down, if in feet, whatever, 
Antifa burns my house down. I got a camper that was wrecked this weekend, by the way. But I got a camper that I can stay in. I got 15 acres that I can pop a tent on if I need to. God will meet my needs. And he'll do it over and over and over as long as we put him first. Next slide. I'm going to put my glasses on because I can't see this. Does your rights, liberty, hinder you? Are, are your rights so important to you that it hinders what you do for God? What are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be about God's business, not our business. We're not supposed to be so wrapped up with what we got to do that we cannot reach out to others. Do your rights, your liberty, hinder you with what you're supposed to do. I have this right, that right. What real rights do I have? What real rights do I have? The right for eternal life. That's the only right you got. That's the only thing. You have the right for eternal life. And God allows us to be here in, in the meantime. But that's what's going to happen. Heaven or hell. That's the only two choices. I get to choose heaven. I got to choose heaven. I was preordained, but I got to choose it anyway. Heaven or hell. Where were you at? Now, that's not necessarily what this passage is 100% dealing with because it's dealing with money when it gets down to it it's dealing with taking care of things but when you put all your focus on money you're taking God out of the process when you take all, when you put all your focus on what's mine you take God out of the process and that's where God led me with these passages I mean, like I said, the first 12 verses were talking about paying the preacher. That's the first 12 passages we're about. Paying the preacher. Meeting his needs. Make sure he had this. Make sure he had that. God makes sure I have it. And this church has been good to us. So depend on God. Not how much money you have in the bank. If others share the right over you, do we not more? In other words, if others make more money than me, do I not want more? If others, if, if others are paid well in the ministry, you know, there are pastors out there that make a, over a million dollars a year. How is that justified in love? Especially when they do not practice love. They just preach about it. Think about it. Why are the churches, why are, are some churches flourishing and others are just getting along? Because we got the wrong message. Do we not, do we not more? Nevertheless, we did not use the right, but we endure all things so that, so that we will cause no hindrance of the gospel. What's Paul saying? Paul was talking about the fact that others had received compensation, so Paul was entitled to it. He was entitled to compensation just like all the other ministers had been done, preachers or whatever you want to call them. But what did it accomplish? He was entitled to it. Why didn't he get it? Why? Because he chose not to. Paul chose not to be compensated. He preached on his own, 
accord. God met his needs. I'm sure he worked some time to make sure that things were taken care of. But Paul preached without a salary, without anything. False teachers sought money. The pre people in the church that weren't preaching the truth, all they were concerned about money. I can tell you, I'll tell you an illustration of more than one pastor that I know, preachers, music leaders, whatever, that said, if you don't give me this much of a raise, I'm leaving. He's doing it for the wrong reason. God will meet your needs. Corporate world, church world, I've never asked for a raise. I've never asked for a dime in my life when I worked. Because God always met my needs. When it needed more, they automatically gave me a raise. Sometimes more than I even thought I deserved. My salary doubled in one weekend. One weekend. Because God met that need. Not as a pastor, but as a layperson. God met that need. I know pastors that have left because of money. It hurts the church. It tears the church apart. I know other pastors that all the, all the members do is talk about how much they're paying them, how it's ridiculous it is. Don't let money divide you. The Bible says, Elders are worthy of double honor, especially those who are hard at preaching and teaching. For the Scripture says, You shall not muzzle the ox while he is thrashing, and the labor is worthy as hire. Now, again, I'm not talking preacher as much as I am others. God will take care of you if you put all your faith and trust in him. Next slide. What is your reward? Where does it come from? Where does your reward come from? God. Everything you have, every ability you got, everything that you can do is a God-given talent. We need to start recognizing that. That all things come from God. Now, God uses individuals sometimes to bless us, okay? God has used individuals in my life to bless me. Uh, Sam, you gave us a mattress one time when we needed one, okay? Others have brought vegetables. Lisa brings us eggs every time she's here. See, God blesses us. And everybody in this room can say the exact same thing. God blesses those who honor him and love him. So quit worrying about everything else and put all your focus on God. For, I, for if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. In other words, it's not mine. I'm not, ex, I'm not an expert. And it's not my ability. What's he saying? Same thing I say when I stand up here. I'm not an expert at preaching. God gives me the words to say. Sometimes I stutter. Sometimes I miss them. Sometimes I can't say what I want to say. But it's all written down. It's things that God lays on my heart as I'm preparing my messages. And that's why I keep changing from one thing to another because I can't read anymore. I can remember when I first started preaching, it was easier because I preached from memory. Every message I preached when I started was, mit was from memory. But I can't preach the same message over and over and over anymore. <laughs> you'll get tired of me, you'll leave. But God gives us the ability to do things. 
And now I just got to figure out where that mold is. But he gives me the ability, whether it's, it's not a Billy Graham or a Billy Sunday or Adrian Rogers, but it's an old backwoods preacher, I guess, one that's still learning. It's not my ability. It's God's. For I am under compulsion. It's my duty, my call. I have no choice. God called me to do this. On the pestering of some, on the encouragement of others, and Ron Nyhoff. Ron made it help make it clear to me and my wife. God called me. I have no doubt. And that's where I want to be. I want to be preaching. It's my duty. Woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. If I don't preach, I don't deserve to be here. I deserve God's severest punishment. If I quit preaching, if I step out of God's will and I start living like the world again, because I did as a Christian, I deserve the severest punishment known to man. Because I'm not doing what God's called me to do. God's severest punishments is for unfaithfulness, especially ministers. And maybe I'm stepping out of line here, but the ones that are rich and are hoarders. I really, and, and maybe, that's, maybe that's one of the things God really needs to work on my heart for, because they need Jesus too. But these people that are getting wealthy off of their prayer cloths, or offer their monthly contributions to be put on a prayer list. Think about that one. If you contribute, I'll pray for you. If you don't contribute, don't ask me to pray for you. Well, I could get rich. Maybe I ought to put that on Facebook. I'm kidding. But you understand what I'm saying? For I do this voluntarily. I preach voluntarily. I could leave. Bye, y'all. You know what? You'd have another preacher within a month, probably. It might take a year, but I doubt it. It'd probably be a month. I don't want to leave. I'm here because God brought me here. I have a reward. What's my reward? Heaven. Here, I'm rewarded here on earth, but my final reward's heaven. But if against my will, unwillingly, I have a stewardship entrusted to me. Sure, stewardship is more than a job, it's a lifestyle. Carefully done with God's objective. You know, if you're working in a factory, and that's the job God puts you in. You should do it with all of your heart, soul, and mind. You should not do what many do as a 70% and 80% worker. You should be a 110% worker, a 120% worker. Why? Because the world's looking at you. And if the world's looking at you and there's one person in that plant, factory, that works harder than you, everybody will see that Christian that's laying around. You might not be laying around, but they'll see that person that's not doing the job. You know what they'll say? And they call themselves Christians. Do you want to be that person? that calls herself a Christian 
and everybody thinks you're a deadbeat, especially in the workforce. We're supposed to do everything we do for God. When you get up in the morning, you thank God for letting you get up. God, put me where you want me to be today. Direct my footsteps. Put me in front of somebody that can share my faith with. I've been fortunate enough that every job I've ever had, I've been able to share my faith. But you can't share your faith if you're a slacker. You can't share your faith on company time, but you can on breaks. Or you can while you're working. Don't be that slacker. What then is my reward? That when I preach the gospel, I may offer the gospel without charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Paul went beyond and preached and presented the gospel without charging. He preached freely. I wrote down a song here. Freely, freely you have received. Freely, freely give. Go in my name and because you believe, others will know that I live. That should be your attitude. And if you get money on top of it, what's that money for? To use for God's glory. Now, sometimes you need that money to support yourself. I'm bivocational. God meets my needs. And God allows me to do things that I was never able to do before. God allows many of y'all to do things that you've never been able to do. Sam, I'm going to pick on you again. I can remember when you retired, you were scared to death that you weren't going to be able to make it. <laughs> but anyway, I can remember over and over and over and over and over that came up. Has God met your needs, Sam? Do, do you still give, Sam? Do you still, does he still meet everything? Why? Because you trust in God alone. You don't trust in that money. By the way, the stock market's crashed. I lost a lot, did you? Well, if, unless you had it uh, put in a secured thing where it wouldn't drop, and then you ain't making nothing anyway. But it, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to, the, it wasn't a financial, it wasn't financial, but the opportunity to share his faith. In verse 15, he said, he would rather die. Paul was saying, I'd rather die than someone think that I was doing this for the wrong motives. I'd rather die than somebody think I'm getting rich off preaching, like some of these people are. Next slide. What is your liberty? Well, I mean, liberty, what can it cost? Really, what do you gain? What do you gain from being a Christian? It doesn't cost you anything. The price was already paid on the cross. It was already paid on the cross when he, Jesus said, It's finished. Why did he do it? He didn't have to. Because of how I started this message. Love. Jesus died on the cross for love. Do we love? I know that was the same message last week. And probably the week before and the week before. Do we love? Now I've skipped verses because some of them Although they apply, they don't apply to this group of people. And, and, and maybe love, but I, I'm trying to preach through the Bible. I know this congregation, for the most part, loves. But maybe there's one in here that don't. 
We have to love. For though I am free from all men, from all opinions, from religion, from judging, from weakness, <laughs> from programs, we don't need a program, we need the Bible. We don't need these new programs, we need the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible's true. And if we start having to preach something besides Genesis to Revelations, that's a program. We don't need programs. We need Jesus. I have made myself a slave to all. Everybody knows what slaves in are. I've got a piece of equipment. We call it a slave. And I got a thing this week that we've got to change the name of that piece of equipment. Why? I'm a slave for Jesus. And when everybody else starts changing the name of everything, I'm still a slave for Jesus. Because that's who God called me to be. I ran from it for too many years. We've got to be slaves for Jesus. I made myself a slave to all so that I may win more. One passage, one, one translation says a servant. I chose um, because I choose, I am under, because I choose, I am under God's authority, not man's authority. That I may win more. Paul bent over backwards to win the loss. I used to laugh at my daddy when I was younger. My daddy would chase somebody down the road to witness to him. It embarrassed me. But I see his point now. I see his point now. We have to share our faith. I do it every day. I don't win somebody every day, but I share my faith every day. I challenge you to share yours every day. Always be ready to give an answer for the hope that's within you. Proverbs eleven thirty says, For the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he who is wise wins souls. I'm glad I found that verse. I've read Proverbs several times, but I've never caught that verse. He who is wise wins souls. That's just not for the preacher. It's for everyone that's in this room. We are supposed to share our faith with everybody. And when they tell you to shut up, shut up and look for the next opportunity. You don't have to cram it down their throat, but you've got to at least be willing to talk about it. My kids made a comment. Don't talk about religion or politics. And I said, you're in my house. We'll talk about what I want to. She got mad at me about it. Now, I don't want to run them off. But we're going to have prayer. We're going to talk about Jesus. I don't have to talk about politics. There's enough to fill me up with politics. I mean, without, without politics. Our liberty to reach all. This is not just for Paul. I want to keep saying that. It's not just for the preacher. It's for all of us. Paul was just using himself as an illustration. To the Jews, I became a Jew. Not changing his beliefs, but he learned how to address the Jews. He learned how to communicate. I talk often about Roy Gingrich, my pastor growing up. I love the man to death. I've learned so much from him. But the one thing that Roy Gingrich could not do, 
is he could not talk about anything but the Bible or gardening. That's, that was the extent. He could talk about the garden, and he could talk about the Bible. You could not talk to him about sports. You couldn't talk to him about anything else. Now, I'm not a sports fanatic, but I know a little bit about baseball. I know a little bit about football. So that's how you break the ice sometimes. I became all things to all men. No, the, I became a Jew so that I might win Jews, those that were under the law. Though not being myself under the law, I didn't practice, I, I practiced the law, but, but within the boundaries of God's Word, of a Christian stance. That I might win those who were under the law, to those who were without the law, the Gentiles, Uh, and being without the law of God, but he's still witness. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get through here real quick. Because I presented Christ. He presented Christ to the Jews, Acts chapter 2. The Gentiles, Acts 17. Presented the law, or presented the gospel over and over and over. I might win those without the law. To the weak! Who are the weak? The downtrodden. The people that stink. The people that it's hard to get up close to because they smell so bad. The people on the street corners that are homeless. The people that are in the drug houses. Those are the weak. I might become weak. I say it often, if you if you got a buddy that's in the bar, don't run from him. Go get him. If you need somebody to go with you, take somebody. But go get him. You'll never win somebody but run it, by running away from it. I become all things to all men, so that by all means I means save some. He used what he had, where they were, and introduced them to Christ. Use what you got and introduce people to Christ. I do all things for the sake of the gospel, the good news of Christ, so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. I do all things for Christ so I can take somebody with me, a fellow partaker. Take somebody with you. Don't get up there and find out that somebody's not a Christian that you spend a lot of time with. Would that be scary? Knowing that you had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to share your faith and you never did you're in heaven, they're in hell. God, I hope this message was said in a way that was understanding. Father, for many years, churches believed, churches were taught, congregations believed, that everything was the preacher's responsibility. Father, we have responsibilities, but the church has many of those same responsibilities. One responsibility is love. Reach out. Help. The other responsibility is share. Share your faith. Witness. Lead people to Christ.